with the economy. Um, yes. How optimistic are you for the fourth quarter? Can you meet the target of six and a half to seven and a half percent for 2022? Well, I think we I think we will be able to manage at least seven percent for uh, for the last year, and uh, we may. Uh, we are hoping to exceed, and I think it will happen. We will be able to exceed our projections of 6.5% uh, growth uh, for next year, for this rather for this year. And uh, uh, again, uh, we're optimistic that the growth rate can actually go beyond 65 and hover maybe around 7%. That is for 2022 or 2023? For 23. For 23. What's driving that optimism, given that? Most are expecting a global recession, 65 percent chance, they say, of that happening. Well, uh, because I, I believe that certainly there is so much uh, space, room to grow uh, in the sense that we have we are starting very many new things now, as I, I suppose, like every other economy. And the basics in our economy have been rather stable. Uh, our growth rate has remained above six and a half percent for 20 Two, and I think 23, as it will be the same situation. Our unemployment rate stays, uh, is, is, is continuing to, to go down. And for that, uh, once the, I, I look at the unemployment rate, and so long as the unemployment rate is not at an alarming level, then it's, very, uh, it's quite likely that you will not have to, uh, have to go through a recession. So that's what we're counting on. Uh, the problems, of course, that we face are similar to to uh, other countries and inflation is actually the one thing that we are uh, having to deal with um, and having to intervene uh, in many ways so that to bring inflation back down. Inflation at a 14 year high, onions yes. costing about yeah. 11 US dollars per mm -hmm. kilogram and the ordinary people are not able to afford that. Yeah. What else can you do? Well, what we've done is we have uh, increased the supply. Uh, it's, it's very, very simple. It's really a demand and supply uh, situation. Uh, the onions, for example, if you, it's a very simple analysis, you look at our production rate and how many, uh, how much we produce and how much is the, the demand, and there's no way you have to import. Now, uh, in the long term, however, sugar is in the same, we have the same situation. We have to import because our production is not high enough. But the long term, uh, the long term, solution of course would be to increase production mm. and that's what we are working on so these are these are measures that we are doing these interventions are i think until we get in place the systems that will start to get our production levels up how, but that, successful, that, that's the long how successful do you think you've been as agricultural chief given where prices are right now well i i think uh, we can ask we can say that we have started already to rationalize the system, because the there has been the uh, imports illegal and legal have been a problem, uh, mostly the illegal imports that have been going through, and the, at the very beginning it was almost impossible for us to determine how many onions there were, how much we had in country, because some of it was smuggled in and we didn't know where where they are and what they were, where they came from, um, so. That we have, we've, we've rationalized that now, and our importation schedules are well established and uh, well understood, right. and uh, all done in keeping with uh, uh, the consultations that we've had with all the stakeholders, including the onion growers in the Philippines. Right. I want to talk about the South China Sea. Mm. You have said that you want to resume talks on oil exploration mm. in the South China Sea with China. Mm -hmm. How do you think you can break that stalemate? Oh, it's uh, it, that's a difficult that's a difficult thing to have to do because the the impasse really has occurred uh, in the application of law, and both sides are, are say that this area uh, belongs. We say it's just a maritime uh, territory of the Philippines, and of course China claims the same, and therefore the application of law is the local law is the Chinese side uh, insists that it has to be the Chinese law and Philippine side the same uh, we may find a way around that is be limited uh, to exploration and uh, hopefully uh, I, I think there's still some give and take well, what are the there. red lines for the Philippines and what are the areas you're willing to concede 
Well, it, it, we cannot concede. We cannot concede any of the territorial claims that are being made against our established territory. Uh, so that is the red line. That is something that it, that, that that will not move, uh, and it's something that we cannot cross because it's a very slippery road from there. Mm -hmm. uh, there are reports suggesting that China's militias uh, swarming and yeah. perhaps uh, looking to seize. Uh, some of the land features. Mm. Uh, what are you doing about that? And is there any intention of lodging a diplomatic uh, protest? Well, we, we send note verbals and we bring the attention. And that's why when I met with President Xi, uh, both in APEC and um, in the state visit that I just, I just had to, to the People's Republic, I said we have to find a system so that these sort of things do not happen. Because uh, if you look at the we we'll call them incidents that have been that have been going on in the past few weeks, months. Uh, it really is a very clear indication that there's very poor communication between the two sides. And I, I suggested, and I think we're going to establish it, is that we'll have a uh, line of communication that is higher up, uh, so that those we forget we we have already a bilateral group that's working on the issues on the South China Sea, West Philippine Sea. And, uh, but I think I asked to raise, I think that it should be raised to a certain level so that the members of that bilateral group can directly call their president. And so if there is a problem, if there is a decision that needs to be made, my team can call me directly and the same for the Chinese side. Just very quickly, President Marcus, I'm just wondering if China does seize some of those features, will the U.S. come to your rescue? Will it intervene? Just very quickly. Well, yes, they have already made that commitment. They have already made that commitment. And uh, as a matter of fact, when, uh, when there are certain reports that come in, uh, some of the American ships come down uh, and make their presence felt. So uh, it's just, uh, uh, we, we, we were hoping just keep and maintain it in that, <laughs> at that level. And uh, the, uh, we, of course, all of us uh, that are stakeholders, ASEAN, Asia-Pacific countries, uh, all just want peace because we really have a great deal of work to do in recovering our economies. Enjoyed this video? Hit the like button and share with your friends. Also, subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.